As a founder, when was the last time you felt like you had no idea what you were doing? That at best you were spouting half-truths to your team, your investors, your customers? Today on the Startup Therapy Podcast, we'll talk about why feeling like a fraud is actually a very normal part of founder life, and why. This is Ryan Rutan from Startups.com, back for another episode of the Startup Therapy Podcast. I'm joined by my partner and CEO, Will Schroeder. Everybody, you might want to turn your volume down just a touch, because we're going to dig into something that I have a feeling is going to get slightly passionate. I'm, I'm, I, can, I can feel Will holding himself back already, and we're about to get into it. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about this very common feeling amongst founders that we're frauds. Will, take it away. <laughs> we're talking about frauds, Will. Explain. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> we, all of us, we wake up in the morning. We're going to work on a product that's never existed for a customer that's undefined, for a company that's never existed, into a future that we have yet to define. What version of that would make us feel certain? <laughs> what version right. of that right. makes me wake it. up in the morning totally and say, understandable. of course this is, a, is, is how this is supposed to go, right? No version of yeah. that, right? But we're in a business where we are all but required to pretend none of that is true. We're, yeah. we're supposed to walk into rooms of investors, rooms of customers, rooms of employees, and pretend like we have defined answers to things there's no fucking way we could possibly know. Right? right. And if if giving those speeches to enough people across enough hours, weeks, days, months, whatever your time you know period is, years, decades doesn't make you feel like a fraud there's probably something wrong with you <laughs> yeah right yeah you're you're pathological at that point yeah, exactly yeah. it's it's funny man it always comes to me in in similar moments like when i when i go into my entrepreneurial uh bunker right and i'm i'm down and i'm like just i'm heads down on product or marketing or whatever i'm building stuff i'm thinking through i'm spending a lot of time convincing myself of all this stuff it all works really well right and i feel fantastic about it you know maybe i'm telling some friendlies and everybody's giving me good feedback everything feels really good and then all of a sudden despite feeling 100% certain about what i'm doing someone's like yeah Come tell this group, or maybe I have to present to potential clients or investors or whoever. The minute all of a sudden I have to go talk to strangers, and all of a sudden, like, oh my God, none of that was true. <laughs> this is <the> <laughs> bullshit. Like, what the <laughs> fuck am I doing? And it, it, it's over and over and over. And you'd think that, like, at some point it would start to stick and be like, oh yeah, that's just always the process. It's as scary every time. It never gets better. And, and, I, and I wish. I could have told you, we've talked about this before, like I could have told younger version of us earlier in our careers that that was the case. Can you imagine how much anxiety you and I have expelled over the past few decades, <laughs> hoping that one day we would yeah. achieve this Jedi status where we could know the future and and we could have just gone back to that younger version of ourselves and been yeah. like, you know there's no way this ever ends, right? <laughs> you know that like no matter what, no matter how much you keep building, the uncertainty is the only certain thing, right? That's exactly That would have been really useful information. Really Hell, I don't even know if that's tool. useful information now. Right? That's the thing. <laughs> and I, I, you know, it's it's good to know and I think that there are times where I can I can pull back a little bit and go, "Okay, look, you've been through this before. You know this is what it feels like. Don't don't worry about it too much." You know, I I used to joke with with Elliot in the early days when we were really figuring out how crowdfunding was going to work and how we could play in that space and how we could really get involved to help. And we were building our, our consulting product around that. The joke was that Elliot would lie and I would make it true, right? And that was the balance. <laughs> like first we had to say something like, can you help us do this? Of course we can. Well, we probably didn't know how to do that on the day we said that. But by the time we talked to the client the next time, we would have figured it out, right? And that's just part of it. You have to put it out there and say, Yes, we can do that. And yes, we're glad you want us to do that. And now we'll go figure out how the hell we actually do that. And that's that's just part of the game. That's the business, right? Now it is. Where it gets tricky is no one tells you this, right? <laughs> and so yep. so there's a reason you know, if they did. Yeah, you're like, you know, what, you're you're what? you're you're going into to all of these interactions and 
you're you're simultaneously on the one half of you is so excited about what you'd love to build, but the other pragmatic side of you is like, well, wait a minute, like I don't have a hundred dollars in the company bank account right now. <laughs> I have yeah. no idea how this is going to get built. Right. Like, like how am I supposed to feel confident about this? And and like I said a minute ago, how how is everyone else feeling confident about it? Like, do they know something that I don't? Right. In uh, no, typically they know far less than you do. That's, all, that's the part that always scares me. <laughs> exactly. it's, it's that realization that I can see this beautiful future in my mind where the product exists, the team exists, the customers are there, everything's just going the way you want it to, everything is beautiful. And then I realize the person that I'm trying to use my mouth words to explain this to is just looking at me like they have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, oh my God, I'm a total fraud. Right. That's where it comes from. Well, right. And, and I remember, you know, early in my career, I, I just didn't get it. Right. And so sure. I, I'd walk into a meeting uh, and this was, you know, when I was running a web design agency in the, in the early days and someone would say, can you do this? Right. You know, yeah. wh whatever, uh, whatever the goal was. Uh, funny aside, this is, you know, in the, in the early 90s, uh, the dawn of the web, if you will. When they ask, can you do something? There was a chance it actually couldn't be done. In other words, yeah. like literally no oh, one had written a shopping cart yeah. engine. Cookies didn't <laughs> exist yet in browsers, so yep. you couldn't persist a session. I mean, like, you name it. And I found out at some point that you're supposed to say yes, right? I'm supposed to say, yes, I can do that, knowing that I've never done it. And then yeah. what I learned later on is that's the only way to build a business, right? That's I mean, it. yeah, you have to deliver on it, right? But you're in the business of doing things you haven't done yet because right. you still have to grow to do those yep. things. The answer to that question was always yes, but it's going to cost you, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was always the caveat, right? And you never put a whole lot of definition around that because you figure like if they just keep giving me money, eventually I'll figure out the solution to this. But but, yeah. but you you feel like a total fraud, right? Like you're yeah. how if the customer's asking me if I can do that and I've never done it before, you know, how can I in good conscience say, yes, you know, I can do it. Now, it it, it pains me to think that the answer is yes, because it's it doesn't right. feel, feel, feel just, it doesn't feel right. What I was missing in that calculation was what I'm saying is I intend to do it, right? Now, yes. what I learned later in life is how many times I would be saying yes when I meant, yes, I intend to try, right? Uh -huh. So- yeah. yep. I'd go to investors and investors would say to me, hey, this sounds like a great opportunity. I'd love to invest. Do you really think you can get to $100 million? Yes, I intend to. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I intend to. And, and folks would come on and say, hey, you know, I'm going to quit my job and join your company. You know, do, do you think it's the right move? Do you think it's going to be a big opportunity? And I would say yes. yes. And I, in, in, yep. in Ryan, when you say yes, don't you kind of believe it? I, I'd like to believe I did. Even though I knew I've I was wrong. Not, I've never not believed it, at least in the moment. Then there were times where after saying yes, and this is, this is another one of those fraud feeling generator moments, is you've said yes to something. You believe fully that you can do it. And then either you think about it more in terms of what that's going to involve, or you talk to the person on your team who would be responsible for making that happen. And they're going, no fucking way. <laughs> and now you're like, oh shit. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, they're, they're it. You always, I think that, you know, it's, it's a hallmark of an entrepreneur that we always believe in ourselves at certain points in the day, right? And so yeah. those are the times where we say yes. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever said anything, yet, yes to anything that I didn't truly believe I could make happen. Well, Have right. I always made everything happen? Of course not, right? That is the nature of what we do. To your point, we live in a fully uncertain environment where we're building things, uh, delivering service that's never existed before. So the, the answer is, we don't really know, but we know that we're going to try. Well, let's stick with that. Let's talk about living in a business that is uncertainty, right? Yeah. And, and so, so let's be clear. If you're working for an established company with an established product with an established price, and the customer says, can you deliver? And you know you have the product on the shelf, and it's just a matter of them paying. Yeah. Of course you can. Yep. We're in the polar opposite of that, right? Yep. We're in the business where we don't know who the customer is going to be. We don't know what the product's going to be. We don't, we don't know where we're going to be. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. We have nothing. <laughs> and every every aspect of what we do as founders is built around uncertainty, right? Yep. Therefore, 
when we're talking about what makes us feel like a fraud, it's not that we're trying to deceive people, right? You know, we, we talked about this, uh, you know, in, in, in the article about this, we said like, you know, Elizabeth Holmes at Theranos, she was trying to deceive people, right? Bernie yeah. Madoff was deliberately trying to deceive people. Like, I mean, th- th- yep. that is the, the foundation of fraud, right? Yeah. If you're trying to build something for somebody, you can be honest and say, hey, we haven't done that before, but we'll try, you know, if, 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 if that makes you feel better about it. But the very nature of what you're about to do is to make a voluminous number of commitments based on no data that says you're absolutely going to uh, make it work. If that makes you feel like a fraud, honestly, you're kind of in the wrong business because <laughs> right. this is yeah. only going to get a lot worse. All right, so let's stick on this, the fraud equals uncertainty piece for a minute because I think there's a lot of situations that come up uh, where we're forced to deal with with questions that we can't possibly know the answers to. Uh, one of the most common ones that we get, Will, is, is this a good idea, right? How do I know if my product is a <laughs> yeah, good yeah. idea? And right? is this a good one? And my, we don't. Right? <laughs> That's the whole and, point. And yet, you're going to bet your entire career, your life savings, maybe the savings of, of people that are important to you, you're, you're going to bet all of that on the fact that you couldn't possibly know any of this, right? Right. If you look at that situation that, that we're going to make all of these bets you know, around our product, let's say, and, and put so many other people's you know, livelihoods slash savings slash you, you name it in jeopardy, not to mention our loved ones you know, and, and what we're moving forward with, yep. et cetera. Um, knowing that you have no idea whether it's going to work or not, it's kind of tough to feel good about that. Oh, it is. It is. Right? It's, it's one of the hardest balancing acts that you'll face as a founder, which is, one, to have enough belief in what you're doing to feel like you can move forward at all, but to be pragmatic enough to look for the signs and do all of the things you can to kind of validate as you go to make sure that you're getting feedback along the way, right? It's super, super hard because at some points you have to kind of put up your entrepreneurial shield and say, feedback be damned. I got to power through this next piece of it. I believe in what I'm doing. I got to get to this next level to validate where we're at with the product or where we're at in the market or whatever. Um, and other times you have to be super pragmatic and really look at, you know, the data, the results and say, are we still doing what we need to be doing? Is this still a good idea? And man, that is, <laughs> that's, that's the, uh, that's, that's hanging a sign out inviting, uh, the feelings of fraud to come in and, and, and visit. Well, especially because you're about to make some really big commitments, right? You're yep. about to say to your buddy that you've been working with for the longest time, hey, you should quit your job and come work on this, right? You should you should bet your yep. future on this thing that yeah. I have no idea whether it's the right move or not. Now, there's probably a version where we're thinking of entrepreneurs, some somebody that's not us, that has all the answers, right? Um, and, and we assume, you know, there's this, this, you know, Steve Jobs type person or what have you that that's figured it all out. And, yep. you know, they must have this certainty or confidence level. They must know some sort of inside baseball that we don't. Oh, yeah. He's somewhere inside a garage floating above his chair, turning out <laughs> startup ideas <laughs> exactly, left right? and right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Right. Not even a little bit. So if if the folks listening are feeling like oh my gosh you know everybody else has the answers will and ryan have the answers but you know i must not have the answers everyone we don't. on facebook has the answers <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly we don't so when you're looking across from your buddy and they're saying hey you know should i quit my job to do this there's no version where you're going to be able to say with complete certainty yes you should do this and i absolutely know this is going to be the right answer you can't possibly know that Right, right. The only thing delusional is to pretend that you can. Now, yeah. The first time this happened to me, when I had my my uh, first first time, I had a buddy of mine quit his job, like a real job, a salary paying job, to officially come and work for my company. He asked me this question. Right now, mind you, I'm I'm trying to think back. He was like 27 at the time, and I was maybe 21. But but he had a real job. He had a wife at the time. Like you know, it was it was it was a real commitment for him to come and sure. join the company. And I remember him sitting across from me saying, hey, you know, I'm really excited to do this. This, this, this whole internet thing seems interesting. But, you know, how can you, how can you guarantee me that this is going to work out? And I started into a whole diatribe about 
future of the internet and web design and all these things, right? You know what yep. I never told him was anything that was like, yes, it's going to work out. <laughs> I basically yeah. just yeah. recited all the reasons I got out of bed. But as I was telling him this, right, like I was thinking to myself, this is probably one of the greatest opportunities I've ever seen in my very short career. And if there's ever a time for me to be certain, this feels like it. And I'm not certain whatsoever. So like, how do I tell right. this guy in good conscience to, to pull the trigger? Yeah, I mean, you, you can't, right? right? You can't tell him to do that or not, or, or her to do that or not. It, it comes down to them making a decision. I think you can give them as much objective evidence as you can, be as clear and as transparent on, on you know, here's, here's what I know and here's what I don't, and here's what we're going to strive to figure out. The right people that'll resonate with the wrong ones will go back to their job, and and that's fine too, right? It's for the better, right? Yeah, yeah, and and, and so you know, <laughs> there has to be collective delusion for all this to work out, right? Like, <laughs> that's exactly I, right. I, um, We're all drunk together. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, I remember the first time I was in an actual VC pitch. You know, I, I pitched angel investors for different businesses before, but when I was in a real deal Silicon Valley VC pitch. I remember sitting up there with my pitch deck going over all of my numbers and getting asked a bunch of questions about the, the future vision of the business and you know the market address the addressable market size and all this good stuff. And I remember thinking to myself, wait a minute, this was just one of those like pause the world moments. I was like, everyone in here does know that we're talking about completely made up numbers, right? <laughs> like everyone's <laughs> right. talking about them in a very factual way. Yeah, right? yeah. Wait a like, minute, Will. Walk us back to year three where like, exactly. that hasn't happened, right? <laughs> it's, I, it's I, like, this product hasn't even been built yet. Like, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I understand we're talking about, about the, the, the what ifs, et cetera. But I was, I'm thinking to myself, you realize we're all drunk right now, right? <laughs> because right, none right. of this is true. There's no foundation for any of this. And the only thing real about this conversation will be the money you put into this business because <laughs> the, yeah. the rest of it's all TBD. Right, yeah. and, and you know the proper answer to all these questions. I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's actually the that's the accurate answer. I guess so. I guess it will be true. Well, I think so. I here's so. what I found was interesting. When folks were asking, "Should I join this company? Should I invest in this company? Uh, you know, should I get behind this and, and buy this this new product? What have you?" What I found they wanted was yes. They wanted a a confident, defined certain version you know right you, you want to know that that your captain of the ship has command yeah. of the ship regardless of whether that ship goes down right right and it, it, it always threw me because it felt to me like what they were investing in what they were making the commitment behind was my self-confidence that i could make a go of it not an actual answer of will this come to pass right sure the implication was, was, will it come to pass? But what they wanted to know is, tell me yes, tell me with the, the fullest of your authority and confidence so that I can feel good about kind of getting onto this journey. But, and that sounds well and good, and I'm sure I said yes more than enough times. But every time, there was this little part of, in the back of my head, you know, you had the, the angel and devil on your shoulder, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and for an entrepreneur, that devil tends to be much, much bigger <laughs> than the angel. Yeah. Wins a lot He's more He's got battles. a sharper pitchfork, that's for sure. Yeah. And the whole time going, you know what? Let's see where this goes, right? And that always felt yeah. like such a weird kind of way to be certain. And what threw me at that, you know, earlier in my, in my career was I, I would be reading about all of these amazing stories of these incredible founders right you know this is yep. this is in the era of forbes and fortune when like that's what you would read and they would have guys like bill gates on the cover you know soon thereafter jeff bezos on the cover and things like that and they would tell these stories of how they built these empires and here's what yep. i'll here, here's what i would think everyone else must be legit right <laughs> yep. everyone else like like jeff bezos must have had some playbook that i just didn't get access to right right yeah the headline might have been every time he knows what he's doing. You're a fraud, right? Because that's that was the takeaway, right? As we're sitting in our in our little the little offices and, and building our small companies or our big companies, whatever. Like that was it's always how it feels, right? Uh, of course, we know that we're getting the distilled version of that, right? And it's not the the reality behind that was that Jeff Bezos has probably felt like a fraud even more than I have. Agreed. Not Agreed. while he's standing on the cover of Forbes. The difference, Ryan, is when he gets it right, he's worth a hundred billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. but, but listen, uh, the way I see it is 
with all the media around us, and, and I'm not even going to just like point to the media as this amorphous, broken engine, right? Maybe it is. Who, who cares? I'm saying e even in our closer circles of other founders that we talk to, et cetera, we get this sense that everyone else is killing it, right? That, that, that everyone else is, you know, got these amazing stories. I can't believe that guy got funded, or, or I, I can't believe she just doubled the size of her company. They must know what they're doing, right? When I tell my folks that, that I know what I'm doing, I'm a total fraud. They've got it yep. figured out, right? But Ryan, I know you and I talk about this. What's so broken with that narrative? Like what's so broken with the concept of they've got it right because I read it online? Yeah, well, I mean, you, everybody's showing their their Instagram filtered version of of what it took to get them there and and what the reality is, right? The uh, <laughs> the scene just off camera is very different, right? They're going through all the same issues, right? It's it's not reality, and, right. and I think that it's it's sad that people have started to embrace some of this stuff as reality. You know, in the best of times, it's great because I think it motivates people, it inspires people. But at the worst of times, the very same content, if you're already feeling down, you're already starting, like you're on the cusp of, of, of feeling like you're on the wrong side of that fraud equation, uh, this, can, this can really, really push you over the edge. And I think that overall, this raises an interesting point, which is there's really two sources of these feelings, right? We talked about, we talked more about uh, the, the kind of the internal, right? As I'm saying things that I know not to be true yet that I'm going to go tackle, but that I'm presenting them in a way that sound maybe sounds factual to the person listening. There's this internal source of feelings of fraud. And then I think then there's these external signals that come at us that allow us to compare ourselves, something that, you know, you and I have talked about before on the show that we should not do because we're only comparing the few data points that we can see um, and not everything that's gone into that story. And you have these external points of, of fraud. I mean, I, you were telling stories about your early career and, and, you know, walking in and, explaining what the internet was to people at that same stage i was doing a lot of the same stuff i actually had somebody i had people tell me i was a fraud right whether directly <laughs> or implied like so it wasn't i, I, I didn't have to figure it out for problems. myself dude I, I walked into an office once and and you know we were both fairly young when we started doing this and looked even younger than we were i remember sitting down with a fairly large construction company in columbus ohio uh who wanted to to do a, a fairly extensive website and so I'd, I'd met with a couple other members of the team, somebody in marketing, somebody in finance. We had gotten through a fair amount of this. I was going to be meeting the, the founder for the first time. And when I walked in and sat down, this guy was, was sitting there reading something, knew I'd come into the room, right? It was power playing a little bit and eventually looks up at me at, from the other end of his giant conference table, right? You know, more, more wood than I could have built a house out of at that point. <laughs> and this guy looks up and he goes, so does your dad do the coding? <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God. Because I, I looked like I was 14, right? right, and, right legitimately. Right. Uh, and, and so now my, uh, to my credit, my response was no, my dad cuts people. Um, <laughs> he's, he's a foot and ankle surgeon, so he's allowed to do that. But yeah, that was my, it was probably not the, the, the best introduction. Uh, did end up getting the business in the end. But, wow, yeah. despite yourself. Uh, yeah, despite myself and despite this guy being a total schmuck. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was made to feel like a fraud, right? He came at me, uh, wanting to, to point out that he felt like I was a fraud and we you know, ended up building a, a great property for them. When I talk to people who have built big businesses or folks that are in the middle of building a big business now, like I'll give you a good use case. Yeah. When I talk to folks who have done huge funding rounds, like, you know, I'm talking about hundred million plus funding yep. rounds and, and I've, and I've known them since they started and kind of I watched them kind of grow through this story. And we get a chance to catch up. And I asked them, I said, you know, obviously, huge news. You know, maybe you've hit unicorn status, so to speak, the billion dollar valuation status, yep. et cetera. How confident are you feeling in the business? Do you know that none of them do? Right? None of them. Wait, no. Right? And, now, now, and for good reason, man. It's a huge thing to have happen. And now all of a sudden, you got a lot more eyeballs pointed at you. So you assume if there are any holes in the armor, they're going to be seen by everyone. And, and these are crazy, ambitious, intelligent, uh, scrappy folks, right, leading these yep. companies. But when the, when the cameras get turned off and the mics get turned off and, and it's just a private conversation over some vodka, it's a very different discussion, <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. These folks are saying, look, like, I can't believe I got all this money, right? Like, all these people are relying on me now. Like, what, what the yeah. hell am I supposed to do, right? 
if I don't have a, a two, three, four, five billion dollar outcome, I look like a, a, a total loser, right? Yeah. But get this. Those are the people everyone's aspiring to be. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's those are the exactly people like, it. you know, reading the stories going, oh my God, I, I, I wish I could accomplish what they've accomplished. And so what I've watched is either in myself or with others, no matter how much you've accomplished, no matter how long you've been at this, no matter what you've done, you still have this internal feeling like there's just not quite enough justification, right? Sure. Look, uh, put it this way. I've been doing this for 25 years, right? From like absolute concept level all the way up to hundreds of millions of revenue, right? I've done this for a long time. Mentored thousands of startup founders, right? Through like every growth situation you could possibly fathom. Like I've seen everything you could possibly see either firsthand or secondhand. On startups.com, I mean, dude, how many books have I written on this on, on these topics, right? About how to start companies, et cetera. Um, I'm not a reader, Will. I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> well, a ton, right? And so having been you've done this for as long as I've done, I've checked all the boxes, you know, you young millionaire, all of that stuff. With startups, we grew to startups to a hundred million dollar valuation in like three years. Like yep. all these things that you want to do, right? And I'm saying all of this to lead up to the fact that I don't feel any differently. I feel as right. shitty about it, not not about the, but about what I've worked on. I don't feel any more confident in my ability that like I've got it all figured out now than I did 25 years ago, right? In of course fact, not. it's worse, right? Yeah, yeah. Because- <laughs> the stakes go up, right? I think that it feels like there's more and more pressure to perform, and yet it's not like we've been playing basketball all these years, right? Where the the rim has stayed the same height. The three point line. Well, okay, that's changed a little bit. The three point line is roughly the same distance, and so you get to do the same thing over and over and over and refine the craft. To your point, from the very top of the discussion, we constantly re-enter an arena of uncertainty, right? And while we might become slightly more comfortable with that conceptually, driving outcomes in that uncertainty is no easier having done it once or 20 times, really doesn't matter. Actually, and I think when you start realizing that, it actually becomes not harder, but harder to look for that that blind optimism. When I was early in my career, I would look at the future as a place of of safety, where I would say, look, I'll have figured out all the hard (laughs) shit by the time I get- I'll have swum to shore by then. Yes, exactly, right? Like I'll have figured all that stuff out by then, right? And then- Things will be easy, like it looked like for the silver-haired dude in, on the cover of Fortune back in the day, right? Yeah. What I didn't realize is that in the game that I was going to decide to play for the rest of my life in the startup game, you never get to a point of certainty. The closest you no. come is if you build something and it becomes a huge enterprise that becomes the very like kind of sacred corporation uh, you know, that, that we're talking about on the other end of the spectrum. But if you're still in the startup business, which is what I live and breathe, it never gets better. Right, because no. I'm constantly going to go after something that doesn't exist that 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 I'm going to build from scratch that I have no answer to. I'm going to be constantly right. asking people to join my merry little band running into the abyss, right? And there's the only certainty I have at this point is that I'm certain of nothing, right? And I think I've just gotten a little bit more calm about that. But I'm as much a fraud as anyone else, right? And that's that's a, a tough pill to swallow if I'm being honest. I think it is, but I think you know if we're honest about it as well, then then we, if if we defraud anybody, I think we defraud ourselves more than anybody else. To your point, you know we have to develop blind optimism at some points. We have to develop that thick skin around plowing through the uncertainty. Um, and in order to do that, you know we have to make ourselves believe things that aren't true, so that we can go and make them true. Uh, but but think about I agree with all of that. But think about think about what we put ourselves through. Right. Think about when we're in a room, a cocktail party situation, and we're hearing everybody chest pound about how they're doing yeah. so well with their business. Yeah. And you're you're scratching your head, like, dude, I, I mean, we're doing okay, but like everybody else seems to be doing better. Like, why are why is everybody else so confident about their business? And 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 you know, why do I feel like shit about my business? And what I've learned when those thoughts start going through my head or or other founders' heads is that we all just have a different perception of how much certainty we have, right? That that one, you know, 
entrepreneur right now that's that's bragging about the future, at this very moment just has a different perception of that future. <laughs> no, it comes down no to a very simple fact. He's he's at that party. He's just had more gimlets than you have at that stage. <laughs> oh, shit, then that that's it. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but but really, right? Like, I think the only way that 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 I know I've found a, a level of tranquility with all of this is to kind of just embrace the fraud. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, just be like, okay, I get it, man. This is a business of uncertainty. If if that's if me trying to work toward optimistic goals with no certainty makes me a fraud, then fuck, I'm, I'm a fraud. I'm sorry, right? I'm going to try to do yeah. my best to make the world a better place while doing it. But I guess I guess that's what it is. Well, it is. I mean, it's it's simultaneously the thing that we fear and the thing that we run towards, right? I think that if if it was all certain, there would be no allure to doing this. I think a, a big part of it is the puzzle solving aspect. You know, it's the you know we get to go figure out things that other people haven't figured out yet. And, and that is a big part of why we do this, right? So if, if you're not embracing the, the, the downside of that, you're, you're never really going to be able to fully realize the, the fun of the upside of running into the abyss. Because it is fun sometimes, right? It is. Um, There's a reason and, we keep sitting up and doing it. <laughs> right? Right. Um, yeah, but then we have to power through those periods where we have to admit to ourselves and, and, and even more painfully sometimes the people around us that we don't know what we're doing all the time. And that's okay, too. You know, one thing we have done, though, Ryan, that, that I've been proud of uh, over the past, you know, tenure here at startups is we've been we've been fairly supportive of the concept that I don't know the answer and neither do you, right? Yeah. Where you know we'll look at a hard problem and we'll say, "Hey, do we want to get into this?" And we'll kind of bandy back and forth, but we quickly come to the resolution where we say, "Let's agree that none of us knows the answer to this problem, and just go pursue it yeah. anyway," right? Yep. And I feel like there's this, there's this future Zen version of Will that just becomes so kind of relaxed that the problems are going to exist forever, the unknown's going to exist forever, and that's where you'll find your peace in this kind of you know abyss of uncertainty, right? I want to believe that that Zen Will can exist like that. He just hasn't reared his head yet. <laughs> I think all. you have to believe that he can exist. I, I have I have serious doubts that he will exist. Um, <laughs> but but I think that you need to believe that so you can keep striving towards super Zen will. Well, I look he, forward to meeting him. <laughs> me too. So so here's here's what I would say in the interim for all of us. If what we do for a living, if trying to create something for nothing, from nothing, trying to transform new industries, trying to kind of like make the world in our image and build this all in a foundation of uncertainty and yeah. getting the people behind us, whether they be employees, our, our family, uh, investors, customers, what have you, if trying to pied piper all of them into this new world it consummates us as frauds, so be it. Then, you know, let me be a fraud, you know, to the day I die. Frauds for life, buddy frauds for life. <laughs>that's a wrap for this episode of the startup therapy podcast this is ryan rutan on behalf of my partner will schroeder and all the startups.com family thanking you for joining us and we hope you'll continue to join us be sure to subscribe rate and comment on itunes or wherever you love to listen to startup therapy you can find all of our episodes at startups.com slash podcast if you're looking for more amazing resources to launch or grow your startup, be sure to head to startups.com and check out Startups Unlimited. It's everything we have to offer, from our online university to our amazing community of experts and founders, and even all the tools we've built like BizPlan, Fundable, and LaunchRock. It's everything a founder needs. Visit startups.com slash begin. That's startups.com slash B-E-G-I-N. You'll thank me later.